Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, I know my voice is definitely like just not familiar anymore because it's been like what, like 12 years since I dropped one of these episodes. It's been like, it's been a few months. It's been a while. I'm sorry. Life gets complicated. And uh, that's the best answer I have. And I'm going to rock that shit out, y'all. I'm I'm done with that. I'm promising I'm going to do better. I'm promising I'm going to get back on my schedule. I, I realized I'm just figuring this shit out. I'm trying to figure it out. And I got no fucking answers and like no answers like so i'm just gonna do my best that's all i got for you uh with that said life's been busy doing that life thing i have a new job uh, i got a bunch of new hobbies i got a whole new plan for life since the last time i talked to y'all i've had a lot going on in the last little bit so uh i got the same friends though same people around, same people with me, spending time with the same great people, just supporting me, holding me up. I really, I appreciate them so much. So, uh, what better way to bring in the new year than to, uh, bring back an old friend? Uh, brought back my old friend Jono that everybody knows from the very first episode of The Rabbit Hole, the episode when I was tripping nuts on LSD and I let him come over and interview me, and now all y'all get to know him for the, uh, the New Year's episode. Happy fucking New Year. Uh, y'all, hope y'all stick around for the whole thing, listen to me and Jono reminisce about the past, catch up about the present, and talk about our future plans going forward and what we got going on. And you know, it really wouldn't be the rabbit hole if we didn't get a little trippy in there somewhere, so let's go. <laughs> get my shit right here i know i'll be talking loud as fuck no i'm really talking pretty good it's been a while since i done mm -hmm. this shit dude yep <laughs> i did an episode with ruth and i never really posted it because shit just got fucked up and then i don't know why i got it there i don't know why i haven't posted it i'm gonna figure it out get my little make sure nobody's hitting me up in the meantime real quick make sure <laughs> my phone's on silent we on silent i'm good to go what's up jono what is up chris yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost, let's see. It was just Christmas. Merry late Christmas, Jono. Merry Christmas. Almost happy new year. It's my birthday in two days. Two days. My birthday was, it was a just your days birthday. Ago. It was just your birthday. We Woo. get we getting born. We getting born. <laughs> I swear to God. It's been an eventful last year, speaking of happy new year mm -hmm. it has been for me at least i'm sure it has been for you it's been a whole it year is, it's I don't been think, a whole change I don't, that's pretty much it for me i don't know if there's such thing as an uneventful year really like how do you go 365 days and not have an event Let, let's hope it's not that way <laughs> <laughs> some of them good so i'm gonna be honest this has been the least traumatically eventful year in a long time it's been a pretty good year. Were like traumatically eventful though? I don't know. There was like a few years that were intense, bro. No, I, I get where you're coming <laughs> from with that one. There's some intense years, but no, it's been this has been a pretty smooth sailing ass year. Yeah. Bunch of little changes over time, but it's not as big as a leap as the year before was. Twenty twenty, I guess. So things have settled down a little bit more. Which I'm definitely glad for. People have gotten a lot more used to the COVID thing, too. Mm -hmm. So, that's that's a huge bonus, I think. I feel like people are at least strapped in now. Where before it was constantly like, oh yeah, it's going <laughs> to end next week. And then being constantly disappointed by it. And then just being like, okay, let's just, we're in this right now. It's going to keep happening until it stops. Is really what it feels like. A strapped in is a great way to put that. Because at this point it is. It was like, there was a period where it was like, is this going to end? I can't keep doing this for a while, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, this better end in like a month. Because if this goes six months, I'm going to lose it. Oh, yeah. And there was a straight up point. Like, I do know there was a point for me when I like felt the shift that it was kind of like 
not like a depression that happened, but just like there was a certain sadness that came when I just kind of accepted it. I was like, okay, I can't just keep pretending like it's going to end soon. I just have to accept it. And then if it goes away, great. But for right now, this is my new reality. Like this is, this is what's going on. And I don't see any end in sight soon. So until I see an end in sight, that's it. I just have to deal with it now. I you feel know? it. Ain't much else you can do, so. Bro, you'd be stressing yourself out so much about shit you can't do anything about mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. You just be sitting there like, fuck. I gotta do something about this. And you just, you coming can't. Out with, coming out with <laughs> blanks every time you think. You're just like, oh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Bro. Okay, I guess I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Hope for the best. I feel it. Well... Yeah, no, 2020 was a 2020 was a hot mess, I think, for the entire world. But, no, I would have to say 2021 was pretty good. What were, uh, what were some great parts of 2021, Jono? Well, I think you know the big one I'm thinking of is probably moving back to Fayetteville. Bruh, that's one of my favorite parts of my year, <laughs> is you moving back to Fayetteville. <laughs> it's been nice. To not have to travel for work. It's been nice to be, you know, near people that I know. You know, not being around an environment of people that I don't really feel like I mesh with. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, it's, I don't know, something about where we live is, it's really easy to just find all sorts of people. And so there really is no one vibe going into any place. It's just a bunch of random people so it's a mixed bag so you never really have to feel like you have to be a certain way you can just kind of be yourself and feel like you're not bugging anybody because everybody else is just doing their thing most of the time i feel it and one thing i will say about this city because you know people people preach that never judge a book by its cover thing so hard but when i say that in in this city you cannot judge someone by the way they <laughs> look yo like there's a lot of places out there you can look at people like you can tell you can tell your hippies you can tell uh, I'm, i don't know i'm i don't got stereotypes right now to pull out yeah, i got yeah, hippie because yeah. i'm one i'm just sitting here i'm like i'm coming i'm really drawing a blank Some, on stereotypes like that you know but it's just like you can you can just kind of tell what types of things people are interested in. you could tell your gym people usually your, yeah, your yeah. workout nuts but it's like here it's like uh, somebody could look like they're the they're they're just the biggest health freak in the world and before you know it they're talking to you about how how they they were tripping nuts a couple weeks ago when they partied on and did coke and got drunk as fuck last weekend with their mm -hmm. friends and you're just like Hey man, it'd be like that it'd sometimes. Be like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's you'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> that, shit, that shit funny. I don't know. This city this city be wild. People be interested. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Favorite part of twenty twenty actually I don't have to think about my favorite part of twenty twenty one. That's a silly thing. Um my favorite part of twenty twenty one easily hands down is the fact that i got off probation hell yeah <laughs> i that would have yep. to be that was a big closure on a rough period of my life that started before i even got in trouble and finally just got that closure and started a whole new chapter that is the rabbit hole and all my new plans mm -hmm. going forward, which is crazy. I don't know. I got through. I, I got in a period for a long time where I started just feeling like whatever happened, like that's just who I was. I was going to be stuck in this rut in this rough little period, just yeah. living a shitty life forever. And all of a sudden, the day I got off probation, I looked around and I said, no, this is a choice you're making, bro. And I just like, I, all of a sudden I sat down, I was like, what do I want to do? And I just remembered that, that mm -hmm. blog I always wanted to start. So, and here we are starting starting going going, going. making progress <laughs> learning as i go for sure amen there has been a lot of periods of 
this is what I want to do with it and not necessarily being able to do it at the pace I wanted to. Yeah. And it would get me down hard. But I finally have gotten to a place where I know that this is a long term journey, a long term yeah. investment. And I just gotta I just gotta deal with that. It's gonna mm-hmm. be good. I'm gonna enjoy it, but I gotta deal with that. And you gotta you gotta keep yourself accountable for all your shit of like like cause that's basically in a very similar way. Like one of my big things for this year has been actually trying to educate myself with things like art and things like that. Like I watch teachers now on YouTube because it's free. And yeah. I, and they and some of them have like really valuable input. And some of the smallest thing they say are the things that stick with me. Like one of the guys that I like watching, he said, if you're going to draw something for practice, don't just draw from your mind. You need to use a reference because that's how you learn. You don't learn from just thinking things. That's already information that's there. It exists in your mind already. If you want to learn and improve, you need to be working from references so that you are learning because there cannot be any new information gained if there's not an input of information. If you are just creating from imagination, it's all output. That makes sense. And he's like, you can do the output, but to grow and learn, there has to be input. And that's what's really stuck with me. And I was like, damn, I haven't been doing as much practice as I should. Cause you know, the fun part is the just output. Like being able to make things, like you said, like you want to get to a certain spot and feel like, cause you know, you can get there. You feel like you, you feel it. You, you know, you have a skill set. you know, you, you have the ideas to do these things. You have the drive to do them. It's getting there. That can be the part that makes you a little impatient or shit like that. But it's more, I guess. I might have gone completely off topic. No, it's no, more, no, it's no, more no. like I have a more of an appreciation that it's going to take me time because I what, feel what you. else, what am I, I'm not to like cry or anything, but like, or get like real serious. What am I rushing to? All right. Like, like I, that's, I got something to fuck you up with. Again yeah. <laughs> real quick. So the movie we were just talking about, yes. uh, uh, me and I was just telling him about the movie, the two th- I believe it's a 2001 movie called Waking Life by uh, Richard Linkletter. Uh, check it out if you haven't seen it, especially if you're a fan of this content, because you will definitely be a fan Very of that. Interesting. Mo- yeah, if you like psychedelics, you will like it. I'm not going to necessarily say it's a good movie to watch tripping. I watched it for the first time tripping. I kept up, but when I rewatched it, I realized how much I still missed so and i could see it being very hard to keep up with depending on how hard your trip especially with how some of the people talk so fast bro but uh so what i was gonna say though is there was a scene with these two ladies talking in uh a diner and one of them was saying i remember when i was younger and i had this idea that my life would somehow climax sometime in my 30s and i would get where i was going and the rest was going to be smooth sailing from there and then my 30s came and i was like oh shit i'm not there the journey's still going and then finally it took time but finally basically she was saying she accepted that 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 was what it was going to be why was i in such a rush to get to the end the the whole point is in the journey the fun is in the journey the fun is learning i i get so down when my content's not growing at the pace i would like but i enjoy learning new ways to produce and improve my content Mm -hmm. still so since there's so much out there to learn and i enjoy learning if my content's not starts to not grow at the pace i would like go do something else you enjoy like learning how to improve it Yes, exactly. Like the the fun literally is in this journey. It is so fun to do this Mm -hmm. stuff that we love. And and it's weird because it feels like, uh, I don't know, because this might be like just like how I feel specifically about this subject, but it does feel like the world is always trying to rush you to something like that. And like, it does really feel like, you know, especially when you're like, they talk about gifted kids all the time feeling like, Oh, like I'm a failure as an adult because I'm not this great person that they thought I would be like, I, I have a feeling that 99% of people kind of had that experience growing up. Like not everybody, but like most people want to make their kid feel special want to make their kid think they're going places, all that different stuff. And that, I mean, that makes sense. I feel like 
Only our you, parents were right, you, though. I'm just you, playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Love all y'all listening. <laughs> like, like, again, it just reinforces the whole idea that, like, you don't even have to think about the journey. You can just you can just walk, just keep walking, just keep going. Eventually, you'll get there. Oh, by a certain time frame, like she said, or thirties or whatever, like that. You, you you get this idea that at a time set there will be something. Just it's gonna happen eventually, somehow, because you're already predestined for it. Because everybody else saw it, so it might as well be true, kind of thing. And I like, feel you. And it's not until those illusions are broken that you really get to even grow as a person, I believe. And I know that might sound extreme to some people, but like when I first like kind of realized that that just wasn't how things worked, I was literally 16 at Disney world. I was leaving Disney world and I was really just kind of like, you know, I'm a kid. So I'm sad. The like fun adventure, you know, I got to go to Disney World. It's over now. But at the same time, for some reason, I was listening to the, they play a song. I think the Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes song, I think is what they play. And I was thinking about that. And it, the message of the song is literally just like, dream it and you'll have it kind of thing. And I had this real, realization. I was like, that's like a load of shit, bro. And I got like <laughs> kind of sad. I got kind of sad about it. And I like got in my feelings about it. But for the first time, I was like, Oh, the world don't really work like that at all. I could work my ass off and get nowhere. And again, that's where you start leading to the thoughts of, well, the whole point is doing the thing. Because at the end, it doesn't matter where the destination is as long as doing the thing was what you enjoyed the most. I feel it. Which is why, you know, a lot of people who accomplish those dreams sometimes afterwards lose interest in just doing stuff. Or they'd have to then find another thing to chase. Because... I, I do feel yeah, that. I feel like that's a natural path of life. And it's ingrained in us. And I know it might sound tacky. But, like, that's why so many movies have that message of... Or, or quotes in everything. You see it in everything. The whole, it's the journey, not the destination. Like, it's it's tacky and cheesy when you see it on stuff like that. But I'm, the message is true. I the feel it. is true. Because so. once, once you get there, you're going to be all really fucking bored, yo. <laughs> really fucking bored. Oh, my God. Computer turned off on me, yo. I got to be able to watch my times. Mm -hmm. I got to be able to watch my times. I'm trying to think. Yeah, no. I was going to say, back, we were talking about, uh, you said something about how the world always seems to have that rushing thing they're always trying to rush you and rush you yes. and rush you and i uh i i was kind of thinking i was like that's uh that's part of the fun and uh trying to i guess create and do some form of art for a living because you can just sit back take your time enjoy the journey and tell the rest of the world to fuck off because none of the rest of them could tell you how to do what you what create. you're trying to yeah do. they nobody else could tell you so it's just sometimes it might feel like you're not moving at the pace that you're supposed to but here's another thing i will say you look at some of these grindy things out here that people do people grind and grind and grind and they have this uh slow i guess i'm uh, not slow i mean i mean this constant like ramp up in what they're doing I mean, it might seem like sometimes mm. your people who are doing these grindy things are moving up at a pace that's quicker than you. But when you see people who actually focus on their, their art, their passion, and they find that way to, to turn it into a, a, a career or, a, or, even, or some form yeah. of like monetization, the, the scale is different. It has this weird little, it seems like you're not doing nothing. And then one day when you find that pocket, Mm -hmm. You find that place for you all of a sudden you're sitting there next thing you know you get to be one of these random motherfuckers on YouTube going let me tell you how I made $40,000 in <laughs> one month on my blog and it's like do your thing guys yeah, live your for life real. be happy for real. <laughs> be happy because I promise you I promise you nobody else out there is enjoying the process as much as you are yeah none of them are oh for real that's some real shit
Hey everybody, I'd just like to take a quick moment to thank all of y'all for helping me enjoy my process with uh, keeping up with the rabbit hole and supporting it every step along the way. i just take a quick little moment uh, away from the interview to say Happy New Year, Merry Christmas to all of my followers and everybody listening. Um, if this is your first time listening to the rabbit hole, Go ahead and make sure you hit that follow button or subscri subscribe button, depending on what they call it, on whatever app you listen to on. Uh, I also will have me and Jono's Instagram down below. Do us a favor. Go ahead and give those a follow. Jono is one of the most amazing artists that I know. We even take a minute later on in the episode to talk about that. So do me a favor. Definitely go give him a follow, even if you don't give me a follow, because he definitely deserves it. Uh, all that support that y'all could give us, honestly, it means everything right now we we have dreams we have goals and we have art that we're trying to get out there and and share with everybody so all of that support means everything so thank you so much and uh let's get back to all the trippy shit i'll see you well so uh speaking of favorite moments of uh 2021 mm -hmm. i know me personally I've probably had upwards of like 20 to 30 uh, psychedelic experiences this year. Oh, yes. <laughs> but uh, how about you, sir? Do you Have you had um, any good psychedelic experiences I've this had, year? I've had one, and I think we've talked about this before, but I did really enjoy it. I kind of, not not microdose, but I took it in force, basically, over time throughout a day. Because it had been a long time since I'd done it. And the thing that I was most worried about is that the last trip literally kind of just told me, like, don't do this again unless it's about the fun of doing it. Instead of trying to search for something specific. And easing into it like that and then eventually really getting into it as the day went on. And just kind of going about my day like I normally would. But having a different, completely different perspective on how it was going. And I realized more often than not, I was just into exactly what I was doing probably the day before, but I was enjoying doing the thing more. I, feel I was, you. I was in that spot. I was playing a video game and I just felt exactly like I did when I was a kid again and just was like, it's so much fun to play this shit. It is so much fun to be able to do this. It's incredible. It's incredible that I have this machine that can make this simulated game for me to test my like mental capacity and my like physical skills of eye hand eye coordination all that bs but it's just fun to do those things to get better to enjoy the game all that stuff and i realized nearly when i was coming down i was like oh you did the right thing you had fun you just had fun that's all you did and that's that was really what I appreciated getting from it because before, like we've talked about is like a lot of times it can just be about trying to find a specific answer. And I don't, I don't need any more answers right now. I'm figuring out what to do with the answers right now. I, I don't need you. to search for new ones. I got to process the answers I do have now. Then once that's done, maybe I'll definitely have some interesting questions to ask. But I'm still processing that shit, mostly. <laughs> I, I feel you 100%. No, I feel like that's a good lesson a lot of people could learn. Because a lot of people have a tendency to... Well, here's, uh, you said something that made a lot of sense in like the very first episode of this podcast. Where you were like, uh, y you were tripping or something. You had this realization that you don't need to be doing this because you got work to do in the real world. Yes. Like, and until you've done your work in the real world, there's no reason to try to come back here, mm -hmm. at least not for this purpose. Yeah. And I feel like that's something a lot of people need to really take time to understand because they'll find so much value and answers and quality in one psychedelic experience that next thing you know, they think that anytime shit's going tough, that they got a, a one hit fix real quick. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like, bro, it's not like that. Sometimes you need to do this shit sober. The most that acid can ever do for you or mushrooms, I say acid 
because it's what I do the most. <laughs> but uh, by far. But uh, <laughs> That's a fact. but uh, there's a uh, the most it can ever do for you is give you that nice little perspective mm. shift to help look at things in a just a different light. But you still got to sober up and it does give you that time frame to sit there and think about it because what are you going to go do? while yeah. you're sobering oh, up you definitely. gotta sit there and wait uh so it's like you get to think and process and then you get to go back on your own so it's like and then you got that work that you have to do mm -hmm. in the real it sends world you with homework for real yeah homework yeah homework that's a good way to think about it it's like it's like yeah, and not to just get all in analogies, but like you get the test, but it's just the answers to the questions. <laughs> you need to go figure out how you got those answers to the questions. That's wild. Like literally, though, and like that's what doing the work is. It's it's all good and dandy to have these fantastic thoughts while tripping out, but if you can't understand why these fantastic thoughts are had by you in the first place, you're it's not going to be solid. You're not going to hold on to it. It's not going to become internalized in you until you know where that shit comes from. That's real shit. Because it is. I mean, it's all inside of you from the beginning. It's just like you said, it's a shift in perspective. It's a shift in how the brain functions to begin with. Like, it just... It's all just for fun unless you're doing some real work with it back in planet Earth. Planet here, Earth whatever. is a good way to put yeah. it, man. But like, because I'm not there for a very long. I'd be leaving this motherfucker. But you gotta, you just gotta know it's different. The answers that they give you just aren't the answers to everything. They're just answers to some questions, and you gotta figure out what the fucking questions are. You gotta translate that shit to English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're aliens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My mom is gonna appreciate that I said that. <laughs> oh God. I'm going to say, the you better go... dimensional being. Mom, you better go listen to the latest episode of The Rabbit Hole. I mentioned aliens. I mentioned aliens, please. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I am trying to... Well, I do know, hands down, what the most significant... Because, like I said, I you had one psychedelic experience that was huge yeah, like one. yeah <laughs> but uh i i have to i have to sit there and pick what or two to mm -hmm. talk about but i do know hands down the most profound psychedelic experience that i had this year was um the one that i had when i was having some problems dealing with some personal issues and some employment decisions and i took uh four hits of acid and just started relaxing and vibing to some music and before i knew it uh i listened to a lot of a playlist that someone had sent me and i was was at that time that i was listening to that playlist or was i it might no, i might be blending a couple of trips together i think it was one before that i was listening to her playlist then the next one i was just listening to other music and uh, out of nowhere, I got kind of in my feelings, so I had to turn off the music mm -hmm. and uh, start listening to motivational stuff on YouTube and then start watching uh, uh, Dr. Sapolsky's human behavior and psychology lecture <laughs> uh, from Stanford University's Always YouTube channel while I was tripping on four hits of acid, and I was stuck. And all of a sudden, I had this quick little, and I realized the direction I wanted to take my life and this podcast ultimately. And it's going to be a slow journey, so it's going to, but I do, I realize I want to go back to school and learn a lot more about some various things and kind of document a lot of the journey with this podcast. And it did, it helped me answer my other two questions that I had set originally as an intent, my personal issues and my employment confusion. Mm -hmm. And it helped me get all that figured out. And when I say that that trip changed my life profoundly, it changed the entire course and direction of my life permanently. And uh, that was one of those situations where yes, I got the answers I needed while mm -hmm. tripping. And now it's time to put in the fucking work for but it. But yes, mm -hmm. I only found, like you said, you got to realize why you found those answers. And I found them because I have a lot of work I got to do here to get this where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. And that work's happening sober. It's happening right now as we're having this recording. Yes. So it's like, but this is sober work and I have so much other stuff to do, so much more to learn, like we yes. said. And that journey is part, it's beautiful part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
if I had to pick one other psychedelic experience that was actually really profound this year, I would honestly probably have to say it was the one that just happened most recently. Um, it happened after Christmas. It happened on Christmas after I got back from my sister's house. After celebrating Christmas. After celebrating yep. Christmas. <laughs> I, uh, I had gotten back from my sister's house. I had seen my niece and I was tripping and I was listening to some music, having a good time. And I was going on my Snapchat and I saw the pictures from Christmas of me and my niece. And then a picture of my niece. And for some reason, this made me realize that all the time I have not been around this person in years, very recent years. Yeah. I still, she still... I'm still important enough to her that when I come around, she's motivating to me, inspiring to me. It, it encourages me regardless to want to do better because she's important to me and she's happy to see me. She likes seeing me and being in a good, being, I guess, just in a situation where I can see her because my yeah. life was difficult for a while. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden I realized that I'm out here trying to impress the wrong fucking people. Real fucking quick, I yep. realized that. And this is where I'm getting with this. I looked and I looked at her and I said, I'm out here trying to impress the wrong fucking people. Because I ain't got to impress no fucking person out here. Because there's people out here who fucking love me already. Yes. They love me like that. So fuck impressing people with anything I'm doing. All these people out here who have legitimately made me feel like I have to earn their, their friendship, yeah. their love, their affection. Um, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> there's a lot of them, and I've realized how deep it runs real recently. But uh, I ain't got time because mm -hmm. every time I feel like I'm not going in the proper direction for the particular people to still feel like I don't know. I guess whenever I feel like that, my friends that I thought were my friends aren't really there for me, even though I'm trying real hard. The yeah. people that I grew apart from during rough parts of my life. But now I'm here. I'm trying hard. I really am trying hard. And it's very f fly by night with them. And it makes me yeah. feel like I'm doing something wrong when it gets like that. And I realize that's not the fucking case. You just don't have fucking time for me anymore. And that's fine. But I can't. Yeah. That's totally fine. That's not, that's not a bad thing. But, but I can't also, let that. Yeah. I can't yeah. let that be negative to me. And you also know that you're in a position where... It's hard to make time for people like that, too, in the first place. Correct. So, in the end, it ends up being somewhat of a win because they're doing the hard work for you, having to separate yourself from it. That's I'm a not, Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, like, negative. Or no, 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 like I like that. that. But, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I like that. That was good. Like, like, because it's hard. It's hard to cut off, of course. That's why, again, tacky shit, people talking about cutting toxic people out of your life. It's not always easy. Especially when it's not an obvious toxic person, you don't realize how much they have an effect on your life and shit like that until you really do cut that cord and you see the difference of what's coming. But a lot of time, it's hard to ever even imagine that difference. So, like I said, it, it can be somewhat of a favor in a way. No, that's like, real shit. That is real shit. It's like, no, that's real shit. People, <laughs> pe people be looking out for you by not looking out for you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> by minding their own goddamn business and staying over there. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Well, so since it's around New Year's time, Amen. what plans you got going forward next year? Do you got anything exciting planned next year or are you just kind of riding this out? I'm not trying to sound boring or like I'm repeating exactly what we're saying, but literally what I'm trying to do now is just to keep on practicing and practicing my own craft and kind of like you're saying like with the whole podcast and everything is i've got plans even me and one of my friends are gonna su supposed to be starting to meet up and like do lessons together and like spend a few hours practicing together like to that, help keep though. each other accountable because they also want to do the same thing so it's a win-win we get to hang out we get to draw some do shit like that but that's cool though it's just I do feel like, kind of like I was saying before, like the whole, I really need to take my time and enjoy the journey of this, is I was kind of convinced that I was kind of hot shit when I was a kid. And I was like, yeah, I am going places with this shit. And 
again, it was like not from a perspective of if I put in the goddamn work for it, yeah, I'll get somewhere. It was more like if I just keep doing what I'm doing, drawing shit, just making shit up, all this different stuff, I didn't do a lot of my own personal studies or anything like that. And that's what I'm really trying to get into is actually doing personal study, not just, well, I know the basics. I know how this stuff works. Just keep drawing. Just keep making art. You're getting better slightly through just doing it and being better, but you're just really refining what you already know. I've got to actually start learning. And that's what I'm focused on for next year. Might not be the most exciting, but again, it is leading me to exciting places. And I know that's for sure. <laughs> I feel it. And everybody definitely, I'm going to put it down below, but everybody should go check out my guy's Instagram. He is a very, very, very talented artist. Thank you. Thank very you. talented artist. I will have that <laughs> down below. It's, I believe it's like at Jumbo Jumbo Giant. Yep. All yeah. capital letters. All capital letters. I will definitely link it down below, but definitely go check my guy out. Go follow my guy. Very talented. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, I feel, I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to fill a lot of my free time with more, I guess, just creative interests and hobbies. Mm -hmm. So it's like... Not just time sinks. Correct. Because sometimes, it is hard sometimes to sit there like, okay, I do, I'm trying to do a video diary regularly, but that's quick, that's simple. Podcast episodes are, they, they're really, they don't take a lot of time. They really don't. Yeah. Um... The blog posts do, but they, they're a process. I can't always force the creativity for the blog posts. I have to just be dedicated, write when I can write. Sometimes I got to make myself write, go back, look at it later when I'm in a better creative space and then improve yeah. on it. But it's just, uh, sometimes there's just not nothing to do legitimately. Mm -hmm. I don't have something to do. So I'm trying to, instead of fill it with, like you said, time sinks, more creative hobbies, I've picked, I've gotten my journaling back hard because that's everybody who knows me knows that's, that's my meditation. Psychedelics and journaling are how I deal with the loud thoughts. I don't necessarily always just close my eyes and do traditional, I guess, just like the meditation that people think of when they think meditation. Yeah. So uh, I pick my journaling back up. And then the other thing I'm really trying to get into hard is uh I want to I really want to get into calligraphy. Um, what attracts you to that so much? So because it just seemed like I mean not that you came out of nowhere, but yeah, like, came out of nowhere. You were like, yes. Yeah, so you I ready? Really do. This amazing thing my mother got me for Christmas. Uh, everybody, this is first of all not a paid advertisement. I truly love this device. Um, <laughs> it's called a Remarkable Two. It is an electronic notepad and journal. Uh. When you figure it out, it is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful. Uh, I can understand why some people wouldn't like it because it is not an iPad <laughs> or a Surface. But it is wonderful for what I'm using it for. Uh, but So it has a calligraphy pen setting. And you can pull up calligraphy paper templates. Yeah. And I was just messing with the pen just doing like cursive script handwriting. Just having fun drawing pretty letters in cursive because i have great i do have very nice handwriting i write a lot uh if you if you do something yeah. continuously yeah uh you should be able to improve it unless you're a doctor you can't improve your handwriting mm -hmm. uh they spend too much time trying not to kill people, people kill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'll forgive it but uh as a writer especially someone who likes traditional handwriting with pen and paper yes my handwriting is nice um all of a sudden, I was having so much fun making pretty letters with it that I was like, okay, so it's a calligraphy pen. I started looking into calligraphy more. Discovered like a lot of modern brush pen calligraphy, how yeah. a lot of people do that. Uh, looking at like pointed pen calligraphy. And all of a sudden, I realized that, oh, I could easily learn this. It's going to yeah. take me a lot of time yeah. to get good at, but I'm not the type of visual artist you are, but I can definitely get yeah. good at that over time and like it, it has a structure to it too mm -hmm. that's different i mean it still can be creative it can be edited all that different stuff but it's going to be letters mm -hmm. it's going to be a specific thing you have There's... you have the setup for it and, and like you said you're a writer and you write well and it looks nice 
this is literally a natural evolution of both of those things is but making it, it is, look even nicer. It is mu- it is much more on the art art yeah. side than the writing side, I will say, because it's crazy the way it's it, like they it's done in strokes and like mm. they have various types of strokes, the the upstroke, the downstroke, the compound curve, it different the, angles, the, yeah, it's, it's it is crazy. And it's and then you find your own little tweaks on it to create your own font styles mm. and lettering styles. But I really do want to get to the point where I can take I, I do want to learn how to do the pretty uh, brush pen calligraphy that's what i'm using to start i actually have pins over there in that cubby hole uh i went and got them and i have uh, more stuff i ordered from amazon just to get it cheaper but i couldn't wait you know me yeah. um but uh i want to get good at it to the point where i can actually take and letter out poetry that would be sick i literally like i blanked out for a second because i was thinking about it. i was like man I would look nice. Could you imagine <laughs> having like a whole page of poem but, just lettered out like well, that that's what I'm beautifully? Saying. You could, okay, so literally you could do exactly what a lot of artists, like visual artists do, is if you're ever stuck on not knowing what to write, you can work on the calligraphy then and write out something that you already know you want to write. And then the creative process becomes about how you write that thing you know you want to write. And that then trains a different part of your mind. Then you can go back to then discovering the ideas that you want to write about and then back and forth and they can play off of each other and eventually just become a natural synergy between them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't no, know. I feel you though. But that's it. That's what like because it was. When I, I see. Like, I guess what I'm saying, I see exactly why this attracts you more. Mm -hmm. that way. Oh, and when I watch people do it, like I'll watch people do uh, lettering on YouTube like. I'm watching an oddly satisfying video. Yeah, yeah it's it is. so it beautiful. Is it's and so he, beautiful. Especially when they got that definition where you see the ink drying as they do it. I fucking love that shit. Mm -hmm. Right. It is. <laughs> it is beautiful. It is beautiful. And then there is this absolutely amazing channel called the Happy Ever Crafter. Bruh, she dope. That's clever. I swear to God. I swear to God. She does like a free class and I'm signing That's up for hilarious. it. It's like uh, she does a free class like twice a year for beginner modern calligraphy with brush pens where she'll basically over four weeks, she'll teach you the various strokes and all that to help you learn the basics. And then she offers other courses after that. But I signed up for it because like the That's deadlines, badass, I swear to God, bro. Cause when I say like, I am that fascinated by this art. Yeah. That is, it's so as someone who just that loves is, that writing, is not, it's not really work to try to study it. No, it's, yeah. I, it's, I sat there for like 30 minutes yesterday, just doing like the, uh, basic upstroke and downstroke, uh, and you're trying to get that natural flow to your hand bro and i'll sit yep. there and like i'll yep. look at one of them and be like that's a great line that's a great line that line is beautiful <laughs> that's one line <laughs> that's the line that i want <laughs> i promise you bro yo for real though it's real and then i'd be having this problem where i try getting too fast sometimes and i'm like you just need to slow down it doesn't matter take your time <laughs> Take your time, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get this exact wrist movement right here. But <laughs> as a writer, I have a impulse to handwrite quickly. Yeah. Like, and this is not handwriting. Mm -hmm. This is different. It's closer to drawing. Slow it down. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. But eventually, it'll get faster. You'll enjoy the fuck out of that shit. This shit be killing me sometimes. You be watching it just like 12 minutes, 15 minutes, 49 minutes. What are we at now? 39 minutes. Oh, okay. I skipped 10 minutes somewhere. Yeah. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> oh, you just anticipating the next skip. That's all. I feel it. But eh, then I would have to say the only other hobby I'd like to kind of start getting back into is making music casually again. Because I did kind of lose that. And I miss yeah. making music. I mean, it's just fun. It seems fun. Even though it's not even a thing that I really am into. But it seems like when people make music, it seems like... Because you get to actively hear what you're making, too. See, you, just like visual art, you see it coming together. And that, I've, can, be I've, whole, yeah, that can be yeah, a whole fun process. Now my, uh, my stepdad, when they moved, my mom and my stepdad moved to Wisconsin. They, uh... Gave me two guitars, so I got them in there, an acoustic and okay. an electric. Gave me an amp. I'm going to try learning that. Never played guitar in my life. 
30 years Might old, well. turned 31 in two days. About to get this figured out, man, at this mm-hmm. age. Don't care. Oh, man, I just love music, so mm. I feel it. And again, Chris saying the age thing, don't matter how old you are, you can literally start right now. I promise you. You can start in a week if you really feel like being lazy, but <laughs> we just, just start it. Especially just start if you're just trying is. to have fun. Yep. What kills me is how many people on some real shit people be really interested in so many things and they immediately just assume they can't do it they've never tried it or at least can't make it into a career path and so sometimes that shuts them off immediately who the fuck cares bro if it sounds fun do it that's one thing that like i feel it like we're all out here trying to make it but i will say that there are so many people that spend twice as much time stressing about what's gonna where they're gonna be in a year than i do and they are in the exact same place i am in life Amen. all the time Amen. yo like chill the fuck out and enjoy yourself sometimes mm-hmm. relax and then they sit there and they're like bro i just got too much to do i gotta get this done i'm on my grind no you've been sitting there for two hours trying to figure out what to do because there ain't nothing to so do right now do your grind yeah like hey, chill the fuck out stop bitching Shaking a bunch of locked doors instead of waiting for the opening. That's real shit. No, that is real shit. Motherfuckers. Wasting your energy. (laughs) I swear to God. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I do want to be more healthy in 2022. Trying to get on a little bit better diet. Drink way more water. Amen. And I do want to completely, I mean 100%, for the rest of my life, cut alcohol out. Damn. That's I swear to God, I want to. I'm not going to succeed right away, but it's going to be a journey. I don't drink. Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't drink. I, I will yeah. drink casually with people, but I don't drink. I I, I prefer I prefer drugs. Alcohol is a drug, but I, I prefer Amen. drugs. It's just how it is. Amen. I would rather do some acid, smoke some weed, or eat some mushrooms, y'all. I would rather roll on Molly. Mm. Uh, that's about it. That's we ain't about got, it. Yeah, yeah. A couple years ago. going, but the list ends pretty much there. <laughs> yeah, a couple years ago, you'd have me on some cocaine. But <laughs> guess what? We got this shit together, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I already shit. did that one. That's why I know I can do the alcohol thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, I kicked. I I was a bad alcoholic. I mean, when I first met you, I was drinking like crazy, yo. Yeah. I threw a whole Guinness can through my wall. Like... I threw a whole Guinness can through my wall. That was because of a girl texting me some shit I didn't want to hear. But I, <laughs> I was also drunk when it happened. <laughs> it is... It's the two coming together, you know? (laughs) That I was just tripping hard as fuck, and I saw the hole, and I was like, bro, you got a drinking problem. And I was like, you throwing cans at walls, bro. (laughs) You throwing cans, bro. That shit is so real. I fucked up that apartment, bro. Uh Not as bad as the police. (laughs) Oh, I'm sure. Bro, I swear to God, no. I am... I did... I went really hard at first with the rabbit hole and I had a period where shit got crazy trying to change jobs, figure everything out. It was right about where I figured out where I wanted to take the rabbit hole. I had to stop completely working on the rabbit hole. Yeah. Like it, it's frustrating that that's how it went, but I figured a whole plan out. And for some reason, the plan for the rabbit hole halted the rabbit hole. Yeah. And that did make me really upset, but finally I got to a point where I did. One day I was sitting there and I was working on trying so hard to work on it, but I had so much other shit going on. I was exhausted because I had just changed my, my jobs, and I said, yeah. it's okay, bro. It's okay. You have time. You're going to get there, and we're there. And your concern for this allows you to know that this isn't something you're just going to forget about correct because i have been that's another thing that i have been concerned about is that if i don't keep up with it i will never do it but i have to i have to it i have to let it break my heart sometimes yeah oh yeah i remember there was a like a eight month period where i stopped doing any sort of art like a few years back and that shit was wild to me because like i used to just draw like every day at one point then it like dwindled down and i'd 
I don't advocate for drawing every single day. You know, like some people will push that hard. I think you should draw as much as you can, as much as you find time for, and as much as you enjoy. Like, that's the truth. But when I got back into it, I would like beat the fuck out of myself about how shitty my stuff was when I came back. But I had come back, kind of like you're saying, I had come back with more of like a nah, like this needs to be something in my life that I do. There ain't no way I can just throw it to the wayside like I almost did. Because eight months is a long time to not do something you were doing nearly every day, at least a couple times a week. You know, that's a big drop off. That's real and a lot of And a lot of people do lose that passion real quick. Something happens, they, they get out of practice, they try doing it again, they feel like a failure when they do it again. They feel like a failure every time they try after that, years apart, and then it just becomes like, well, maybe I'll pick up a pen here and now, or maybe I'll do this thing that I liked here and now, and then feel shitty about myself again. And I was like, I don't want to be that dude. Because I'm, I'm, again, off on a tangent, not to talk shit about my parents or anything, but I remember being really young and seeing some charcoal painting or charcoal pictures my dad had drawn when he was younger and he was so proud to show them off to me but i i would i was thinking the whole time because you know i was still drawn and trying to be an artist even from a really young age i was thinking you know you stopped though like why why did you stop what made you just lose complete interest in this and it's just because it wasn't important to him anymore i feel it and i don't feel that way I feel like this shit is really important to just my existence in a way. Like, I just feel like it's just not me if I'm not doing it. And there's not many things in my life that I feel are that are that grounded in who I am in a, as a person in a way. Like, That's, I, don't, I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly. No, no, like, that, that makes it well, because it's a uh, it's it's like humans humans have that survival instinct like we're going to do everything in our power to survive mm-hmm. and the second you take something that is that important to you and you you accept within your your soul your very existence that it is critical to your survival that you make this a success it's just what it is you are not alive and successful even if you're still breathing yeah you're not alive and successful if you didn't do this Mm-hmm. It'll break your heart if you don't do it. It'll hurt you. It'll kill you inside for not doing it. Yes. And eventually, you're either going to completely plummet, or you're going to pick that shit up and you're going to do what you have to do. Yes. And that that is, again, back to exactly what we were saying at the beginning of this whole thing, is the, the whole important thing is just, you got to just keep doing it. <laughs> you got to keep doing it. I mean, is a simple philosophy you can apply it to literally pretty much everything in your life. You know, you just got to keep doing it. As long as you yourself aren't harming anybody else, but you're doing what you want for yourself, keep doing it. Because the only tragedy is when you stop someone else from doing their own thing. That's the only time you can really, really fuck up. I think. Yeah, and you need to fuck off with that one. Yeah. If you're doing yeah. that, you need to look at yourself and say, you, my guy, are fucking up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Well, with that said, I'm going to have some links down below, everybody. Uh, have winked a wink, yeah. I'm going to have yeah. a wake wink, Jono. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there was the wink, everybody. Uh, I'm going to have a link down below to my website, trhpodcast.com. Go check it out. Go skim through. Shortly after arriving at that website, it's probably going to ask you to sign up for a newsletter. Do me a favor. Put your email in there for sure. Uh, You will be notified about some really, really good stuff. While you're on that website, check out my blog. Check out my podcast. Make sure to find my podcast on whatever app you listen to it on and hit that follow button or subscribe button. Every time a new episode comes out, it's going to let you know. You'll stay up to date with it. Uh, go check out my social media, mostly Instagram. That's the one I'm most active on. Follow me on Twitter too. Trying to figure that out, but I, yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh. <laughs> that's about what I got. But definitely follow me on Instagram. That that's a big one. Please do that. And then of course, if you're listening to this episode on YouTube, hit that subscribe button down in the corner. Hit that like button. Comment. Let me know what's up. 
please hit that subscribe button if you're listening to this on YouTube. Uh, and then with all that out the way, Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy New Year's, Jono. Happy New Year's, Chris. And uh, Merry Late Christmas and Happy Birthday to me. Amen. Happy Birthday to <laughs> me and Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> happy Birthday to me That's how I got my Merry Jesus. Christmas in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is funny as hell. Oh, man. Y'all have a good one.